Hello, my name is Ava Wendt. Welcome to this tutorial about using parameters within Crystal Reports. If you are already a Crystal Reports user, you're in good company. According to recent statistics, there are over 1 million registered Crystal Reports users and probably many more unregistered. So, knowing Crystal Reports is today and should continue to be a very valuable business skill to have. Crystal has become the leading reporting tool and is embedded with many widely used enterprise applications like PeopleSoft, SAP, Bond, and about 200 or more different business applications. It has been evolving since the late 80s and really took off when Microsoft bundled it with its Visual Basic in 1993. Now that you know a little bit about the origin and evolution of Crystal Reports, let's take a look at using parameters. The definition of parameters varies depending on when and how they are being used, whether in math, scientific, or programming applications. In the context of Crystal Reports, Parameters are placeholders, sometimes called arguments, in programming instructions that will be replaced with the user-supplied values at runtime. Parameters allow a report to be more versatile, reusable, and easier to maintain. The following example shows a company's past year's revenue by city within region compared to current year-to-date revenue. Without parameters, Crystal Reports would have to render all the regions and cities instead of just the selected regions and cities. Or we would have to create and maintain several different versions of the base report. Instead, with parameters, we can design user prompts to let the user choose the selected region and cities they wish to see. So let's see how it works. Let's take a look at this report before we added the dynamic cascading parameters. We can see here we have a 17-page report because we are not filtering out by just for just four cities. So how would we go about adding the parameters? We would go into the design mode, then go into Field Explorer, and on the parameter node, right-click and choose New, and we're going to create a new parameter. So we'll call this um, the region, then city prompt. It's a string type, and this is important, that the data type of the parameter needs to match the data type of what you're comparing it to. Instead of static, we're going to choose dynamic values, which means it will pull a current list of values from our database and that way we'll never be missing any newly added cities or whatever uh, type of field you might be looking at. For the prompt group text, this is where we need to clue the user that we're going to be sort of drilling into this. So I'm going to say please select country, region, and cities for this report. The data source, um, because we don't show anything in our existing window yet, we need to go down to the new area and click the first line to add the top level value, which um, we need to actually go all the way to the country level for this to work properly. Otherwise, we may see regions that don't belong to the correct country. So that will be our highest level. Next, we would go to the region, which corresponds in this database to what we think of as states. And we, we don't actually create parameters until we get to the very bottom level. Then we would choose our lowest level, which is city. And here's where we would actually click to create the parameter. And we want to go further down into the value options then for that final parameter and examine them all and say that yes, it is editable on the viewer panel, 
that's new in 2008. The prompt text should again um, mirror something like what the user needs to do. Please select country, region, and cities for this report. Allow multiple values for the cities. We'll say yes. And that's all we need to do here. The rest will let default and click OK. All right, now let's see. Um, so far we've created the parameter, but unless we do something to have it influence the selection criteria, it really has no effect on the report. So for that phase, let's go to the filter or select expert on the expert toolbar and add this new criteria that would say, uh, we'll find that parameter, or actually we'll choose the city, and that will be equal to the parameter. We always want to use equal, even though we may allow multiple values, because it's, excuse me, it's set up to work that way. And let's click OK with that. And now let's preview. And because we haven't entered these prompts before, we have to do it the first time through. So we'll choose our country. To choose the USA. And then again, I'll choose California, which we looked at in the earlier sample. And I could choose either single values from this list, or I could add them all by clicking the double arrow and click OK. And there we have it. Got our four cities in the graph. So that's how it works. Dynamic cascading parameters are a great enhancement.